Hey folks, uh, today's video is going to be on uh, putting together uh, the composite wing. We have the moulds now, which we had in the last video. And now we're going to uh, lay them up and put the foam in, vacuum bag them and make us a set of uh, test wings. Now these are just wings which are being used for prototyping only. They will not be flown with and you'll see why in further videos because they pretty much get destroyed. Anyhow, let's crack on. Okay, it's time to uh, do the foam cores for the uh, composite wings. So I've made templates up and uh, they're made out of cardstock. I've done that so that they're uh, nice and thick. So what I've done, I've got the 1 8 Da Vinci foam. This is what I use for my uh, foam core. I've added some weights. I've cut them out, of course. Now, the Da Vinci foam comes in, I believe it's a four by four foot by 30 inch sheet. And it's just about four inches short to get a set of wings out of one sheet. So what I've done, I've been able to uh, cut about four inches off the tips of each of the uh, cores. And uh, I pieced them together. And that gives me a, a complete set of wings out of a sheet of Da Vinci foam. So that's about $60, $70 right there. So if I hadn't have done that, then I'd only be able to get three panels out, which then, you know, obviously the price starts to add up. So what we need to do is fit this now to the mold. And I'm going to do that with this uh, little uh, embossing heat tool. And the reason I use this small one, because it's 2,500 uh, degrees or whatever uh, sorry 2500 watts and it heats up real quick so here we go I have some pretty uh, sharp uh, angles here or curves so I'm really going to get it hot so it's nice and spongy like that and then I'm going to eat it up real close and push it in, just like that. And as it cools down, it will hold the form so that when I vacuum bag it, it will uh, be much easier. And seeing that there's no structures on this leading edge, it doesn't matter if I deform it slightly. As long as it forms and gets sucked in properly, it'll be fine. So I'll just continue uh, heating the uh, leading edge up. As I move down the wing, I place the weights uh, where I've just been, and this holds it all down because you know how foam is, it can move all over the place. Uh, it's pretty easy to do, it's just a little time consuming, but um, you need to do this, otherwise your vacuum bag's not gonna come out properly. I did make the mistake of <laughs> putting the PVA on before fitting the foam, so hopefully my PVA has not got messed up, otherwise I'll have to uh, wash it all off and redo it. But that's what happens, you know, sometimes you just screw up. And like the idiot which I am, I did screw up the PVA whilst uh, pushing that foam into the leading edge. So instead of repainting it or cleaning it off, uh, it's very lightly damaged, just a couple of little spots. So I'm just going over with a artist brush. Uh, I use this flat one. I always use this one for spreading PVA. And I'm just touching it up a little bit. And when it shrinks, it should uh, just shrink to basically nothing and it should be nice and smooth. Now I'm just going to uh, rough trim uh, th this leading edge. I'll probably have to uh, do it again once I get the cloth in, but right now I just want something to work with. So I'm just trimming it flat. Yeah, if you're uh, going to be doing this kind of stuff, uh, be extremely careful with that knife. It's so easy to cut yourself, and believe me, I've had my shop look like a CSI crime scene. Sometimes we got resin on. 
gets a little difficult to cut cloth and foam and anything else because it slides on you. The uh, plane that we're building is, uh, I showed it uh, a few uh, videos ago, uh, the fuselage at least, and it was a very light uh, beige with the Sandy camouflage on it. So this is the uh, color scheme of this plane. And as you can see, the, uh, the base color is like a light beige. Then there's some kind of uh, uh, browny, mustardy looking color which is the uh, camo added to it. So the bottom of this wing is uh, gray. The top, obviously, I've done in that color. And the leading edge is all black, which makes for a, a real easy uh, paint scheme. And what we're using is this uh, Valspa color sample. Uh, it comes in a pint jar. This is from Lowe's, so if you're in living in the USA, uh, it's a big box store. Yeah, they may also be in Canada. I don't remember, actually. And uh, we keep the paint code so that we can just keep uh, getting them refilled. It's about five, six bucks for a pint. And uh, I dilute it down about 30%. I'm just putting the paint into the gun right now. Because it's latex or water-based um, acrylic, I put a, a light coat on first. So that atomizes, and that's because the PVA is water-based and dilutes with water. So if I put it on wet, I've got a risk of uh, doing the PVA. So we're just going to get it coming out, go quick. Yeah, I just want to basically get a bit of coverage. Nothing fancy. We're not painting a car. This all gets covered up, and it will look beautiful when it's... Uh, Finish. Because we have a lot of rivets, especially on the top piece, I'm going to uh, just build up the rivet coat to ensure that we uh, get nice fill. See, it's pretty much atomizing as it comes out of the gun. And because it's latex and this is meant to be spraying a thinner paint, you don't get a big fan like you do with a big paint gun, you know, when you're doing a car. And uh, I don't really want that either because I don't want to lay it on too thick because it just adds weight for no reason. All right, time to lay some cloth. <clears throat> so first is to get really good coverage with resin. Can't be cheap with this now. This will make us a breakers. Gotta make sure everything's covered. Nice heavy coat. Don't worry about weight. It will be sucked up once we go to vacuum. <laughs> Cut up some three quarter ounce cloth and uh, we'll do that. Make sure there's no old resin on there. Okay, make sure we got this right, yes, so this is going to be interesting, we need to get this on first, right there like that, it's a bit too far over. Biggest thing is to get this edge here, the trailing edge.
call this the flop. And if you screw it up, then it really becomes a pain. This part of uh, laying the uh, flop, or putting the first code in, it's against the actual uh, uh, mold itself and where all the detail is. So it's super critical that you do not have any wrinkles in this. And you want a really good amount of resin also. The trailing gauge is where the uh, control surfaces uh, wipers will be. This is the recess in the wing, which is about a quarter inch, five sixteenths, something like that. And the controls actually fit flush inside. So they must be perfect. Normally I used to uh, put resin on the bottom cloth plus on the bottom of the foam. But this time I'm trying something different because it uses a lot of resin that way. So I put a lot of resin on the, uh, the lightweight cloth below. But, uh, and then I put the foam in. So there's tons of resin underneath. And my theory is it will suck out because it always comes through. So there's no point putting tons of resin what's going to go to waste so anyhow so the top cloth going in now so i'm just making sure i get it all nicely wetted then we'll put the peel ply on which is the separator and then uh, the absorbent material and we'll bag it and snag it and hope the best <laughs> See, this piece where I spliced it here, just being on the wingtip, uh, basically it's not going to be structurally uh, super important. So I don't mind putting a split there and piecing it, the foam that is, because the savings in uh, material far outweighs a little bit of weakness at the wingtip. <laughs> So now I'm just uh, planning more resin, making sure I've got 100% coverage. I'm uh, trimming around the uh, surface of the parting plane, getting as flush as I can. If you don't do this, the bagging could snag on. Got the bag on. Everything seems to be pretty sealed. It's taken about a minute and a half between the pump coming on, which is pretty damn good, actually. I used a uh, sealant tape. That's uh, from, used on RVs for sealing windows and stuff because I ran out of the, uh, the professional stuff for composites. So I just whipped to my uh, local big box store and uh, found it on the shelf. Works great. Now here's a funny story. <laughs> the second half of the wing did not go so well at all. I could not get a vacuum, it just would not work. I don't know why it wouldn't work, maybe I just got lucky with the first one, but I couldn't get a seal. I, so my options were limited. Uh, I had no more tape left, uh, and obviously the RV stuff was maybe a little stiffer than uh, it should be. So I ran to the hardware store, I purchased the heaviest duty commercial grade large uh, garbage bags that I could get and this is what you see in the picture. Unfortunately I didn't have time to film it because I was running out of time, the resin was starting to go stiff and I had to get it done. So I just threw the uh, wing mold and everything into this bag, zipped it up and uh, it actually worked pretty good. Unfortunately, the resin had stiffened up too much, so I didn't suck as much through, and the detail got ruined. Hence, these wings become prototypes for test only. <laughs> hey, crap happens, right?